Imagine if I could show you a way to be able to eat and drink whatever you want and never gain a pound. If you think that diet and exercise are the most important aspects of weight loss, here is what they are not telling you. Maybe you're struggling to lose weight, you've done the diets, you've tried the exercise with no results, or more importantly, you get some results and then that fat and that weight comes back and it brings friends. I know it's frustrating. I've been there and this is something that I think a lot of us can absolutely relate to. This is something that, you know, before I had children, I had a weight issue and I struggled. And over the years as well to maintain my weight, I've actually sort of tried uh, and have experimented with different types of diets. So yes, whether it is, you know, the keto, the fasting, the intermittent fasting, they all have benefits. But to really get the results that you're looking for, I have now found some secrets, which that's exactly what today's show is all about, and hidden secrets to weight loss that no one is telling you about. Today, I will discuss the science of weight loss and leptin resistance. I'm going going to talk about what leptin is, why leptin is important, and how to fix this leptin resistance. So this doesn't have just to do with weight loss, but also in regulating our hormones, so both for women and for men, for having a good positive mood, also for great sleep, even your sex life will change, and for loads and loads of energy. So if you're new to my channel, please make sure that you are subscribed, click that bell so that you always get notifications of our newest and latest uploads, and stay tuned right into the end of my video video because today I'm going to teach you a special interactive exercise for your leptin signaling that you're absolutely going to love. This has never been seen before. I've never shared it with anyone and this is really impactful on weight loss but on all of those other hormonal things and our metabolism and everything that's going on in our body if you want to live a long and healthy life and it actually helps to de-age you as well. So that is going to be revealed at the end of this video and there's something that you can start doing tonight to start losing weight immediately and feeling your absolute best. Leave your questions and comments below. You know during this show it is live. We're streaming live. I love to interact with all of you. I will give you a shout out. I'll do my best to say hello to everyone. If you've got your comments and questions as well as you're watching this, because I don't know when you're going to be watching this after the live show, because of course we archive all the shows here on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it at any time. So thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Janine Baring, naturopathic doctor, mother of five. I'm a medical researcher and, you know, the author of best-selling books. So I'm, I'm here to give you the information and I've, I've done so much research on this topic about leptin that I want to share with you what I found because this is groundbreaking for so many people because I'm sure you haven't heard about what leptin is and why it's so important. And if you have heard about leptin, I'm going to share some of the things that you haven't heard and how you can actively get your brain going, get your leptin receptors activated. So that's why you have to stay tuned right until the end of this show so that you can get in on the interactive exercise and we're going to start practicing today. So what is leptin? So leptin is the master controller of the body, whereas other people will say it's other things and hormones in the body. To me, in my opinion, the leptin and the leptin receptor, this connection is of utmost importance. It has a lot to do with our healthy circadian rhythm, and it's like the accountant of the brain and lets our body know and the brain know if we have enough stored energy or not. And when we're talking about circadian rhythms, it's super, super super important that the brain is now connected with the light signaling from our environment, with cold, with hot. It has a lot to do with electron and the electron density in our cells. I'm not going to get into all the physics and physiology here because it's way out of the scope of this show, but it has a lot to do with being balanced and having a balanced life. And part of being balanced 
is having proper leptin receptivity in the brain, in the hypothalamus, which we're going to get to in just a second. So what does leptin do? Leptin helps to activate our immune system. So right now with COVID-19, the pandemic, this is of utmost importance, and nobody's talking about the connection between leptin and having a healthy immune system. And you're going to see why this is important and why a lot of the cofactors of having proper leptin levels is important when we're talking about that. We'll also go back to that slide and I'm going to show you, you know, some some of the other aspects of leptin. So here we see it has to do with our cardiovascular health. So increased heart rate, but also high blood pressure and regulating blood pressure helps to regulate our thyroid and thyroid hormones. So we know that metabolism and thyroid go hand in hand. Also regulates our appetite and the control of our metabolism. Helps with our glucose and our insulin, which is important, helps with our hormones. So as women, helps with fertility issues as well. But for the guys as well and for the regulation of our bone mass so it really is a multitasker that's because it works high up in the brain in the hypothalamus and it was only discovered in 1994 so I, I wish I had studied it when I was back in school as a naturopathic student but it, it was just being discovered at that time so it's no wonder that it's taken me you know that many years to to figure all of this out and put all of these things together and it is secreted by our fat cells it's also secreted by the enterocytes in the small intestine, but mostly secreted by our white fat. And the white fat cells will send that chemical message up to the brain and it's in acting in the hypothalamus. So that now when we have that proper reception and that connection in the brain, what's happening is that that leptin connects to the receptor and we get the message that to stop eating. So this is a survival mechanism that has to do with being able to know what's going on in our environment. So with normal leptin signaling, which we can see here, that is, we can see a healthy body weight in this individual on the left, the adipose tissue, so the white fat tissue, sends that leptin to the brain, the brain gets that signal, and knows to stop eating. I'm full, I'm good, I stop eating. Now what happens unfortunately in leptin resistance, which we see on the right, and uh, the more, and this is, this is the kicker, the more overweight we become, the more fat cells we have, especially the white fat, which isn't the one that we want to have, and this could be visceral fat around our organs, as well as the subcutaneous fat, that leptin now is going up to the brain but there's a resistance there is a problem with the receptors which is what we're going to start fixing today so make sure you're staying tuned right until the end when we get to that exercise really important to fi fix those receptors so that our brain can then take in that leptin because when we have the resistance which we saw in the slide basically the brain says no I am not hearing your signal anymore so similar to insulin resistance if you've heard me describe that before now what's happening is that the brain is no longer getting that signal and it can't understand the fact that our leptin levels are okay so what does the brain do the brain says go get more food because it's not getting that signal so it's almost like the leptin is low go get more food we're in this starvation mode go get more food go get more food and this will explain when we get to the symptoms of leptin resistance this is going to explain to you why we have certain symptoms because that whole brain signaling with the resistance is not happening so that's why leptin and obesity are definitely linked to one another and even you know when we talk about the studies so there is our study studies that actually relate the leptin resistance to the functioning of those receptors which we can see here and of course that link to obesity and this was done in mice and this is you know just goes to show that the next you know that's important to find that relationship between having proper leptin fitting into those leptin receptors in the brain so that we have that proper feedback mechanism in terms of being able to get the right information from our body that we're not in famine mode that we definitely can stop eating. And if I think back, you know, to our ancestors, when our body accumulated enough fat, then, you know, the message was, and the brain would read that information and say, okay, we don't have to search for food right now. We don't have to expend the energy to go and get that food. 
we're good for now, but certainly in times of famine, the body needed, you know, those signals to, to go and, and the hunger sets in with other hormones as well, to, like ghrelin to go and get the food and to now satiate. So, and this has a lot to do with our circadian rhythm and the brain depends on the signals that it's getting from leptin to know when to burn fat, and this is important for weight loss, but also when to store fat. So basically what's happening is that, you know, with our insulin as well, and our leptin is only secreted when our insulin levels drop. So this becomes important when we get into the tips today as to how to fix this leptin resistance problem that, you know, you'll start to understand why it's so important. So I want to say hello, Marie Thomas. Hello, Marie. Nice to see you. And there's, I, I guess a lot of you are watching. So thanks for tuning in. It's so, ha I'm so happy to have you here and listening today. This is such an interesting topic. And, you know, I want to hear from you. Have you even heard about leptin? I, I'm, I'm, maybe you have. And, you know, what have you learned? But, you know, I think it's groundbreaking to be able to discuss it and to be able to find ways to actively help our leptin resistance and those are the tips and the tricks that we're talking about in today's video. So here's the other thing with leptin resistance and with our whole going back to our ancestry is that you know right now our brain doesn't know that there's a grocery store right around the corner and that we have access to food at all times. Our brain is always looking on and trying to interpret those chemical signals like leptin to give it information. And because we have so much access to food, this is part of the problem. And when that leptin resistance is happening, unfortunately, the brain isn't getting the right message and it gets into resistance. And the way I have a great, you know, way that I think of this as an analogy is like, you know, like I'm a mom of five. So <laughs> it's funny because a friend called me the other day and she's talking to me and, and all the kids, like one of them after the other, I was on doing some work on the computer. I was on the phone with my friend and the, the kids are in, in the background. One would call mom, 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 mom. And I, I completely tuned it out. And my friend said to me on the phone, she's like, Janine, don't you hear that? Can't, your kids need you. No. Oh, really? They do? They do. <laughs> so that's kind of like what happens if you're a mom of even one child. You know how you kind of tune them out. And it's not a bad thing. We have to do that for our own sanity and survival as moms. But, you know, it's something that, yeah, that's what's happening with the, the leptin receptors in the hypothalamus. It tunes out that excess of leptin. And imagine the fatter you get, the more of that leptin is going to the brain. The brain just kind of says, no, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. And this is why it's important important to, you know, have that connection. And again, going back to famine, this was a survival mechanism in times of famine. When we're hungry, we have to go find food. When we've eaten, we have enough fat that has been accumulated in the body. That leptin goes to the brain and says, you're full, you're good, you don't need to eat anymore. But of course, when we're overweight and become more and more overweight, this gets even more out of whack. The other thing that, you know, this is funny because on TikTok, I did a number of videos when I first started TikTok a couple of months ago, and I was harassed because I was talking and I talked about hormones and I said, calorie restriction or CICO, so C-I-C-O, calories in, calories out does not work. And I was, you know, flooded with all this hate and negativity and all these, a lot of kids um, and some of these youngsters on TikTok are saying, how can you say that's true? You don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, okay, well, obviously this is not something that's, and I, and I looked into then what's going on in terms of mainstream medicine and dietitians and things. They're not taught this. They're not taught about what they're taught is calories in, calories out, which simply does not work. And that's why when we look at the hormonal reasons for why people gain weight and they can't lose weight, this is the crux of weight loss. And that's why it's a hidden secret that nobody wants you to know about because of course the industries that feed, you know, <laughs> and, and are supported by the, the, you know, masses that are overweight, this is a big problem. So the other effects of leptin are certainly on our thyroid, so it slows down our thyroid, which re regulates our metabolism, we know. And with the calorie restriction thing, the more that you restrict your calories, the more you're suppressing your metabolism, and the body never catches up to that change. And this is that yo-yo dieting, that cycle that continues and continues, it's you know something that we definitely, we have to find a solution to. So this is why we're talking about the subject today. So if you're just tuning 
tuning in. I'm Dr. Janine Baring. I'm talking about the science of weight loss and leptin resistance. Thanks for watching. And, you know, be sure to also check out now I've started putting stories on YouTube. So if you're, you know, subscribed and you love the channel, check out my stories as well because we'll always give you some updates, some fun things behind the scenes as well as to what's going on here at the Dr. Janine Show. So make sure you check that out as well. So let's talk about some of the causes of leptin resistance. I'm sure you've been, you know, sitting at the edge of your seat wondering, okay, what causes this problem? So there are some things, and I'll give you the tips in just a moment how we fix this leptin resistance, but here are some of the things that cause the problem in the first place. So when we look at the diet, that's definitely part of it. So we've got to clean some of these things up out of the diet. So first let's talk about polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs. And PUFAs come from corn, corn oil, canola oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, as much as they're, you know, said to be healthy, usually the seed oils, especially if they're not organic, can be a problem. And the, the problem with this is that they mess up our phospholipid bilayer, yes, getting technical, you know, my geeky side and always comes out a little bit in these shows, and that's the outside of our cell membranes, and these need to be nice and fluid and to allow for light to come in, and I said I wasn't going to get into the light and the electrons and all that, but it's important that we have nice fluid cell membranes because that helps with transporting electrons across, across the mitochondrial, mitochondrial membranes, which is important for our overall health, but that gives us energy, and so this is one of the causes now for the leptin resistance, as well as alcohol. So a little bit of alcohol is okay, but too much is going to destroy your vitamin A levels and has a lot to do again with this light cycle, our circadian rhythm. So everything in moderation. Insulin as well. So whenever we're indulging in too many sweets and overeating, especially closer to bedtime, this really messes up our insulin, but also messes up our leptin and le causes leptin resistance. So overeating in general. So if you're taking in, so yes, I'm going to talk about calories. If you are just simply over consuming calories, there could be a reason for it because you're not getting that signal of your leptin to say you're full, you're good, you're done. So this is part of the problem. So that could be why you're overeating in the first place. But overeating, yes, will cause more of a leptin resistance because you'll start to put on more fat cells and then and your fat cells will expand and this will be the problem. So high fructose corn syrup, so anything that's going to spike that insulin is a problem and this is hidden in so many foods. You've really got to read your labels and I always say if you need to eat a food that has a label on it, it may not be the best food for you. So, you know, getting back to nature, things that you get from the earth that are growing in your environment are always best. And wheat. So wheat can also be a problem with leptin resistance. So when we talk about now calorie restriction, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, so the yo-yo dieting and really restricting your calories, that could be a big problem as well when we're talking about, you know, your leptin and, and keeping your leptin levels high. So if you're having, you know, difficulty uh, staying on diets and staying motivated with eating just, you know, a little bit all the time, there's a reason for that. And that's why that weight's not coming off. It's related to the leptin resistance. Now there are environmental causes as well. So when we take a look at the lack of sun, so you know that I have a whole video on sun exposure and why it's so healthy for us, but we're indoors, we're working. Darker skin, of course, is even more at risk for having, you know, lack of natural vitamin D from the sun, but it's more than just the vitamin D. This is a whole other show on its, on, on its own with how leptin is related to the energy that we get from the sun on our skin, into our brain, into the, our pineal gland, so that, that would be another cause. You've got to see the sun, even living here in Canada during the winter, even on a cloudy day, you do your best to get especially that morning sunshine. Grounding. So when we're not grounded, this can be a problem as well and has a lot to do with our electrons in our body, which I touched upon earlier. So that's important. Make sure that we're grounded and we'll talk about that when we get to the tips. And another problem is that we allow our body to acclimate to our environment too readily. So we never get cold because we put on the big winter coats. We 
crank up the heat in our homes and our cars and we also don't allow ourselves to get too hot we use the AC and you know we we have to allow our body to go to these extremes to a certain point to allow again for our body to get and their brain to get those signals from our body as to the best way to utilize our energy expenditure and that again is a whole other program about brown fat and making sure with cold adaptation that we're doing that so get a little bit cold we're going into the colder months now and that's something that I try to do is to you know allow myself to to get uh, a little bit cold and and doing that periodically it helps your immune system as well also blue light so whenever we are focusing and we're looking at anything that is related to a electronic device that gives off light we are immersed in blue light and even our regular bulbs in our homes the LED lights are the worst because they're really they spike high on the spectrum of that blue light so anytime we're basically indoors in modern in our modern world it has a lot to do with leptin resistance as well so you can imagine one of the tips is to you can just imagine what it is. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but we're going to get to that in just a second. As well as inflammation. So if you've got a lot of inflammation happening in the body, leaky gut syndrome is related to this as well. So we've got to tighten up those tight junctions in the leaky gut. And this is where diet is at the beginning until we fix that leptin resistance. You know, we've, we've got to clean things up and, and get this healed. And then we can get to that point of being able to eat whatever we want as long as we've got these things going in the right way for the leptin resistance. Also over-exercising. So don't let me forget that. I mean, people are actually overdoing it, stressing out their adrenals. And you try and you struggle to get that weight off. And I know I've been there at certain points of my life and that weight just simply wouldn't budge and despite and then you get so frustrated and of course we get frustrated because we're doing something that we think should be helping us and everybody else or men especially they can extra start exercising a bit and the weight just comes off like that but I think it's a bit more difficult for women and our leptin resistance and all of our other hormones but remember it's happening high up in the brain in the hypothalamus and that's why we have to have that connection as well as stress so I'm going to come back to this in just a second and hello to Irvi, Kayla, Brock, nice to see you thanks for tuning in we have a question okay so the question is I am insulin resistant does that go together with leptin resistance yes absolutely 100% you have to fix the leptin resistance first. And this is where I sort of did things a little bit wrong <laughs> until I did a lot more research on leptin resistance myself. So I fixed my insulin resistance. And if you saw our show all about sugar addiction, so that's a big thing. Yes, that they do go hand in hand. So yes, it's not gonna harm you to, to go after the insulin and watching the carbs, absolutely. But you've also got to fix the leptin resistance because they work hand in hand and it's usually the leptin resistance that comes first the insulin resistance is going to be the next problem that you run into it's always left in first because it's working up high in the brain if that makes sense to you so that's a fantastic question thank you so much for whoever asked that I'm not sure who asked but thank you so much um, so coming back to it you know the other causes of leptin resistance are stress we know that cortisol levels wreak havoc on our body so that is important that we are addressing our stress and circadian mismatches and this is why circadian rhythm is so important it's it's what I'm writing about in my next in my third book now all about you know finding that right balance with our environment and getting in tune with that so some of the signs of leptin resistance how would you know that you're leptin resistant well you could have a thyroid disorder and that could be either hyper or hypo if it's great Graves disease, especially autoimmune. So Graves and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, that would be a fantastic sign that you have leptin resistance. As well as inflammation, which we talked about, obesity, so you're overweight, or you've got some stubborn fat, especially belly fat that you're trying to get rid of. And particularly in, in that midsection, this is another sign of leptin resistance. Fatty liver disease, so not necessarily related to alcohol, could be a sign of leptin resistance as well. High blood pressure and you know having that that blood pressure that is not stable would be another sign of leptin resistance. Type 2 diabetes would be 
another sign of leptin resistance and insulin resistance, of course, as well. Degenerative disc disease. So if you have had, you know, a slipped disc in the past or back pain in general, um, but the disc problem, again, another sign of leptin resistance. Fertility issues, especially in women, but in men as well. And poor immunity. So hello, I mean, current pandemic, this is so important to fix the leptin resistance resistance because again it's the master controller of what's going on in the body and has a lot to do with our immune function as well as well as sleep apnea so this would be another sign that you know you are leptin resistant and something that needs to be addressed starting today but don't worry because at the end of this video stay tuned it's coming up very shortly I'm showing you a revolutionary exercise that's going to help you to wake up your leptin receptors turn on the hypothalamus and really get this leptin resistance on track. So some of the indicators that may indicate in your blood work, and not all of these tests are <laughs> always tested for. It's something that I had to ask my doctor to run some of these tests because they're not always on your standard blood work. So it's something that you could ask your doctor about. One is the highly sensitive CRP, which is an indication of inflammation basically, but MDs will use it as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and they're thinking always about the heart and the arteries but if you have a high CRP it shows that there's inflammation and this would signal to me that there is some leptin issue, leptin resistance. Another one is a high reverse T3, so thyroid hormones, your TSH test is not always the best test when we're talking about leptin resistance and really giving a good indication as to how your thyroid is actually working so your reverse T3 gives more information and if that's high that would be another indication. Low vitamin D, so low vitamin D status definitely is related to leptin. Remember we talked about, you know, getting natural sunlight exposure is super important for our leptin levels, as well as a high salivary test of your cortisol. So if your cortisol is out of whack, that could be related as well. And increased triglycerides. So if your triglycerides are high, and the studies have shown, which we can see here, that that relationship between high triglycerides, they inhibit the transport of leptin across the blood-brain barrier. And that could be one of the, so the leptin now is, it's not about even the receptor. That leptin isn't even getting into the brain because of the high triglycerides. And that could be blocking um, that whole connection of the leptin to the receptor because it's not getting up there anyways. Uh, it's, you know, traveling from our fat cells up to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus isn't getting the message that there's a lot of fat there. And so simply that's the leptin resistance so if your triglycerides are high that would be another indication there's a whole other slew of blood work that would give an indication that there is leptin resistance but so those are some of the key ones to look for so let's talk now about the symptoms of leptin resistance how would you know that you have <laughs> leptin resistance well number one you crave carbs and this is where I was for a number of years and as much as I have you know strong willpower which I know a lot of you do sometimes you just can't help yourself and especially the desserts the sweets if you're like me who has a sweet tooth you know this was always a challenge and the problem with being good all the time and always restricting yourself from the carbs and doing the whole low carb thing no sugar diet and getting off the carbs was that you become not a nice person when you're doing it because your brain is always telling you and this is part of the leptin resistance your brain is always telling you go get more go get more go get more and so you know this is something that you know in discovering this and now having fix my leptin resistance that I can say coming on the other side of it that I simply don't crave that that stuff anymore and if I have a little bit it's almost like it sets me off in a weird way that I it's like oh I I have no idea why I ever craved this stuff before and don't get me wrong I still enjoy my little treats here and there but it's not like before where you would have a little bit and then you'd have to have a little bit more or if there's a piece of cake or a full cake and you take a little bit more off the side and no you're telling yourself no, I'm not really having more cake but you take, keep taking more off of the big cake yeah that was me and I'm telling you when you fix the leptin resistance this completely goes away and it's and you don't think about it anymore and that's the beauty of fixing what's going on up higher 
in the brain centers when we're talking about leptin resistance. If you get hangry, so this is true for the guys, I find, but for the, for the women as well, if you get hangry, that's a sign of leptin resistance, which of course, if you haven't heard hangry before, it's hungry and angry at the same time that irritability is hangry. And it's not a good thing for yourself or more importantly for the people around you, they're not gonna like you too much. Also, if you just never feel full, like you just never have that satiety, you never feel full, you're never completely satisfied with eating, that is, again, the leptin resistance. Also, if you exercise, so you do your best to exercise and you're simply not getting the benefits that you think that you should from the exercise, that would be another sign of leptin resistance because you're not burning that fat because your body thinks that, you know, there's no need to burn it off because it's not getting the leptin signal. And if you have sleep issues, so this is related to your leptin as well. If you can't sleep, and especially if you know you can't fall asleep, but then you do fall asleep and you're waking up in the early morning hours and you don't have a restful sleep, that is related to leptin resistance as well. In women, the menopausal belly weight gain. So this is related to your leptin levels as well. And in the guys, it, this is important in andropause because guys go through their own type of menopause. It's called andropause and this would be related to that, that midsection weight gain as well as men are aging. So if you're just tuning in now, thank you. I'm Dr. Janine. I'm talking about the science of weight loss and leptin resistance. Thank you for tuning in. I'd love for you to give me a big thumbs up and also like this video by, you know, also leaving your questions and comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if this is new to you, I would love to hear. And also if you've been struggling with your weight, you know, on the commenting, I do get back to everyone. If you've got questions, I'm there every day checking in tuning in to see what the feedback is on Facebook and, and in other places TikTok too it's keeping me very busy I'm always yeah <laughs> having to respond to everyone which I love I get the best questions and the best insights from your feedback so thank you for all of that and thank you for tuning in hello Harvinder thank you for tuning in thank you for watching um, glad to have you here with us today so now let's get right into it how do we fix this and I know this is what you've been waiting for. So here I will discuss nine tips how to really lose weight. So let's get into it. Tip number one, of course, at the beginning, and this isn't forever, but we've got to watch this and you just stick with me here because don't be scared of any of the tips that I'm sharing. At the beginning, you have to a little be a bit more regimented, but as time goes on, once your leptin is fixed, it's it, like I said for myself and my own experience that once I fix the whole thing, and tip number one is decrease the carbs, so don't get scared, but decreasing the carbohydrates is important. But once you fix it, you're not even gonna want them anymore. I'm telling you, it's a crazy what happens. So tip number one, decrease the carbs because the triglycerides, they, again, they, are not allowing for that leptin to get into across the blood brain barrier to get into the brain into the hypothalamus so that the brain can now read the chemistry of what's happening in the body and this is a po important point and most of our leptin is secreted about four hours after our last meal of the day so imagine if you're eating a lot of carbs close to bedtime so you've passed 6 7 p.m you know depending what time of the year it is and where you live but if you eat too late especially carbohydrates into the evening this is a problem and this was me i was craving carbs for whatever reason i had to have popcorn or some kind of carb or crackers and cheese and something before bedtime it and it was like my body just needed it and this this was my leptin resistance and I can say now that I've fixed this and I it, I feel so much better because I felt like I yeah I don't know because I've had so many pregnancies like I was always in that state of like having to find and when you're pregnant you crave more carbs I think and I did anyways and I had to always find these carbohydrates. So that for me was fixed. And that's why, you know, it's remarkable once you fix your, your biochemistry and your brain and what's going on, how you don't need these things anymore. And leptin is only secreted when our insulin levels drop. So that question that we had earlier today, I know one of you asked, you know, is leptin resistance and insulin resistance related? Absolutely. So this is why your leptin, again, for, so let's say you stop eating, and this is what I try to do, stop eating at 6 p.m. Four hours after that, 
that's when your leptin will start to be secreted. And this is, again, from the fat cells, we'll send that signal up to the brain. That only happens when our insulin is low and if we are in a dark environment. So if you are lit up like I am in the studio here, not a good thing, especially after the sun goes down during the day because there is an imbalance in the lights. We've got a lot of blue lights in our homes. We want to tone that down as much as we can. So that is important. Also, let's go to now the next of the nine tips of how to really lose weight. Tip number two is to increase our healthy fats. So we want to increase things like avocado in the diet as well as seafood, which gives us our DHA, which is super important for our cell membranes. And this is important to be able to allow the light from the sun to come into our bodies, to turn it into energy and to get all those electrons flowing the way that they should and to really rev up our metabolism. So seafood is fantastic. And you know, fish oils are great. So the, the smaller fatty fish are always good. Um, but however you can, sometimes you, people need to supplement, but you wanna be higher in the DHA. So we'll share some links below um, to help you in that regard, to help to direct you to some great fish oil, especially high in the DHA. Tip number three on how to really lose weight is to maintain a healthy calorie intake. So if you are really cutting your carbs drastically uh, in terms of, sorry, your calories, so cutting carbs, yes, we want to cut the carbs, but if we're really restricting our calories and we do this ongoing, this is why intermittent fasting every day is, in my opinion, not the best thing to do you have to take breaks because you don't want to signal your brain that you're in famine, that you're in that famine state when you're leptin resistant. It is not a good thing. It'll further take more time now for you to fix the leptin resistance. So you want to eat sensibly. Here's the other thing, you don't want to snack. So no snacking allowed. So you have to have your two to three meals a day and that's it. Every time you snack, you're spiking your insulin. It offsets this whole mechanism as we weren't historically, our ancestors didn't eat, you know, all the time. We want to sort of spread out our eating windows during the day and we don't want to snack when we want to fix our leptin. And we want to ensure that we have enough minerals. So when we have that healthy caloric intake, we have to make sure that we have foods that have enough minerals. Magnesium is a big one, but potassium, sodium. So in another show, I want you to check it out, The Hidden Secrets of Magnesium Deficiency that we have here on YouTube. Check that out because there I share an electrolyte drink. Also make sure that you're following me. I believe we share this recipe on Instagram. And if we didn't yet, I will make sure that it gets posted, but I believe it's there. So it's an electrolyte drink that you can make, that you can be sipping on, especially when you're fixing your leptin resistance that will really help you to get through uh, these stages for you know fixing your leptin. And especially when you're coming off the carbs a little bit, you may want to, to feel like you're satiated and the minerals is um, often that missing link. So that'll really help you through. Tip number four is don't exercise, over exercise. So yes, exercise is important, but don't over exercise and this is <laughs> I know a lot of you are singing and you're loving me right now because yeah when you hear yeah work out more work out more exercise more take some nice walks you don't want to overstress your adrenal glands and I was guilty of this doing the spin classes doing you know all of this crazy cardio all the time and not losing weight and so many women that I speak to and they ask me you know how do you do it you've had four kids how do you look like that when when women ask me I said yeah you if you're overdoing it at the gym or doing your cardio or running or whatever and that weight's not coming off it's not working for you you've got to switch it up there's something that you're missing and this is why we're doing this video today because so many of you and especially women they ask me all the time you know what am I missing everything that I'm doing isn't working for me and that's why you don't want to over exercise especially the cardio eventually once your leptin is fixed then you can get into some weight training some hit training and yes some cardio but you don't want to overdo it all because that high cortisol level with your adrenals leads to more of that insulin resistance which is something that you don't want and when you work out is important as well. So you want to match your circadian rhythms and working out later in the day is a little bit better. So between three and 6 p.m. sort of is a window that I try to hit in terms of my exercise routine. 
And that's a great way to make sure that you are doing it at the right time. Again, tying into our circadian rhythms. Tip number five is to cover your skin and your eyes when you're indoors and to be able to block out that blue light. So there's something called melanopsin and this is important when we talk about leptin signaling and this is found in our skin but also in the retina of our eye and that blue light that we're exposed to in all our devices, it, this is a blue light detector and it lowers our melatonin so it has a physiological impact and what it's supposed to do is that melanopsin reads that blue light which is in our our morning sun so when the sun rises in the morning that blue light is meant to turn off our melatonin so that we wake up for the day so imagine if you're using and I talked about this in our EMF show so check that out that all of that blue light keeps inundating our skin and our eyes that is not now going to have a favorable uh, help to what's going on with our hormones and this can offset our leptin and our melatonin levels and this it's all related and it's this is future videos that I'll share this but just make sure that you're limiting your blue light exposure especially after the sun goes down at the end of the day because that's important and again leptin is secreted four hours after our last meal in a low light environment so the worst thing you can do is be on your devices you know, at bedtime or after the sun has gone down, inundating your eyes and your skin with all of that blue light, you want to do things like read a book and, you know, there's different light bulbs and things that you can get with more of the red lights, which is actually better closer to bedtime, but what's best is a candle or a flame, like think of our ancestors, that they didn't have all this artificial light. That was how nature intended us to have to see at night was to have a flame. So food for thought. And you know, without the, our proper amounts of dark after the sun has go down, this really does affect our prolactin levels and our growth hormone, and these are all interrelated with our leptin and growth hormone is something that helps in terms of being a huge fat burner and so when we don't have that restful night's sleep what's happening is we have less autophagy and we want to make sure that we're maintaining autophagy this is our natural fountain of youth that helps to make sure that we are aging gracefully and to be able you know to do that uh, without having that all of be inundated with all that artificial light it really goes a long way and I'll, I'll tell you since I fixed the leptin problem and it's an ongoing thing I'm fairly new to this with fixing, fixing my own leptin resistance it's incredible what I've seen happen with my own skin like it's almost unbelievable uh, and people ask me you know what what's going on like people want to know the secret but yeah it's incredible and when I visited centenarians um, in different parts of, of uh, of Central America what happened was yeah that was I couldn't I was fixated on their skin because their skin just looks so radiant and beautiful and they get so many hours of sun exposure every single day that I, I that was one of the mysteries to me so I was determined to figure it out and this is one of the things was the leptin and getting that morning sun so this is tip number six is to be able to fix your leptin resistance is to get the morning sun you want to see the sunrise and getting that morning sun especially from sunrise to about 10 a.m. to be able to look at the sun, of course, in a healthy way, get that sun exposure. It's incredible what this does for your body. Wakes up your pineal gland as well. Wakes up that whole, again, that, that blue light from the sun is going to turn off your melatonin. Has a lot to do with our circadian rhythms and making sure that our leptin gets fixed. Tip number seven is to ground ourselves. So yes, we want to get grounded. That means bare feet, uh, bare skin on the ground and connecting to the magnetism of the earth. And this helps to turn on our internal battery, which needs to connect to that magnetism of the earth. And our body needs those electrons from the earth. It comes up in through kidney one, which is an acupuncture point on the bottom of our foot comes into our body and helps with our leptin levels as well, which again is our master controller of our electron status in our body. And also helps to decrease the inflammation in our body when we are properly grounded. So that's important as well. Okay, tip number eight is to fix our leaky gut. So yes, leaky gut syndrome, as I mentioned 
earlier in the show is very much related to leptin resistance. So we want to decrease inflammation in the body. We want to make sure that we get that sun. We have to increase our vitamin D status. So whether that's from sunlight exposure, from foods that are high in vitamin D. So seafood is, is great for vitamin D levels, but sometimes we need to supplement. So here in Canada, I supplement every day to make sure that I'm maintaining that healthy vitamin D. So you can check out our whole, we have a bunch of videos all on vitamin D and some very specific information on how to do that healthily and in the appropriate way. Also by increasing our DHA, so this is important for fixing our leaky gut as well. So again, this usually comes from a fish or a fish oil supplement. Again, higher in the DHA is always important. And also increasing our selenium. So Brazil nuts are a fantastic source of selenium you want to eat probably two to three brazil nuts a day to make sure that you're getting this important mineral helps to fix your leaky gut as well and tip number nine is cold exposure so if you joined me last week uh, you can always check out this video it still exists of course here where i did the face dunk challenge in some ice water i dunked my face so check that out i'm waiting to see your photos as well this is going to be a challenge that we're launching on the other social platforms so check that out and send me your picture of your i face dunk in your ice water it's fantastic for longevity um, and to look youthful but also great for your leptin receptors as well because that cold adaptation is really important to make sure that your leptin is working the way that it should. So this is the part that you've been waiting for. So some shout outs. I want to say hello to Irvi and hello. Thank you everyone for watching. Marie Thomas and Brock and everyone that has tuned in. Thank you so much for being here. Harvinder as well. Hello and thank you. Thank you. I know that everybody's been sharing the videos with your friends, which I truly appreciate. I think more people need to know this information, especially <laughs> about leptin. And for anybody who's struggling, if you have a friend who's struggling to lose weight, please make sure that you share this video so that they tune in as well and they can get this fantastic info which is great so this is the part that you've been waiting for so this is the dr j9 self-healing visualization that i'm going to share with you and again this is never before released this is live today and i'm i'm sharing it with you because i really want you to now start to find that balance that mind body connection balance for your own health to be able to fix your leptin and if you're new to this is quantum energy healing, don't be scared. This is something that, you know, consciously we're going to be working on together today and I'm going to guide you through it. But this actually happens when we sleep. So this is one of the reasons why deep sleep is so important because it helps you to connect with the quantum energy in which we are all connected. And this is where the true healing actually takes place. So we're going to consciously in sleep, of course, you're in your subconscious or the unconscious state hopefully the subconscious so we're going to tune into today into the consciously being able and to make ourselves aware of our leptin receptors we're going to fix those receptors we're going to wake up the hypothalamus and i'm going to guide you through it how to fix your leptin resistance but before we start i want you to take a look at a couple of things so we're going to first take a look at so when i'm talking about the brain and i'm talking about the hypothalamus i'm going to get really specific you don't need to know where the different parts are I'm going to go into them as I'm talking you through the visualization but just kind of have an idea that we're focusing in on the hypothalamus in the brain as you saw there and when you're visualizing that just kind of go to the middle of your brain and, and picture that as well as the leptin receptor. So the leptin receptor, which we can see here, remember it's secreted from our fat tissues. We see the leptin is this red sort of blob, and this is, you know, a, a great, um, picture of what the leptin receptor looks like. It's going to sort of bind to this leptin receptor. And that's what we want our leptin receptor to look like more or less this is an interpretation of a leptin receptor but this is what we kind of want it to look like when it's healthy and it accepts that leptin in so that it is working properly okay so we're going to get right into it now so what i'd like you to do is make sure that you're in a comfortable position 
you are going to be closing your eyes and of course you can listen through it the first time today as I'm talking you through this but I want you to replay this uh, for yourself in the future and utilize this and you want to be doing this closer to bedtime so remember our leptin is most active about four hours after our last meal so ideally you stop eating um, 6 or 7 p.m. depending on where you live and then you're going to go to your relaxed state where you can nicely meditate through this and be able to do this for yourself make sure that you're grounded so that's important and you're gonna close your eyes take a few deep breaths and you have to be relaxed so this won't really work if you're in that sympathetic part of your nervous system you have to be in that relaxed state of your nervous system so in the parasympathetic and this is where all the healing happens in your body and so you're closing your eyes you're grounded if you can do this in a grounded environment that would be even better and you're going to take a look at your body and visualize your body as you wish it to be. Now we talked about leptin, yes for weight loss is one thing, but maybe you're wanting to work on your fertility, maybe you're trying to fix your sleep, maybe you're trying to fix your cardiovascular health, maybe you're trying to fix your sleep apnea. So no ma matter where, because leptin again is so multifunctional in your body, I want you to picture, I, I know for a lot of you it will be that healthy and, and you know that good body tone and good body composition. That's what you're aiming for. I want you to picture your body in that state and take a few deep breaths of your relaxed, healthy body in that healthy state. Breathing in fully and breathing out. And continuing to breathe and just allow your nervous system to completely relax, tuning in. to the innate power of your body to heal. Okay, that's great. Now, keeping your breathing going, we're going to start to focus in on the brain, so on the hypothalamus. And remember, this is in the sort of the middle of your brain. You don't need to know exactly where it is, but focusing in, asking your hypothalamus to fire up, to be reactive to the healing and the light that we're sending. And activating that hypothalamus to be ready to receive the leptin that's soon coming. We're asking the arcuate area of the hypothalamus to be active for our proper homeostasis, activating and helping our pituitary hormones, our cardiovascular health, fertility, and our metabolism. We're also activating the ventromedial nuclei, helping with hunger, fear, and dissipating fear. Helps with body temperature and thermoregulation and sexual activity. Also helping the ventral tegmental area, and this is our reward center and where the neurons are for our dopamine. Now we're going to focus on the actual leptin receptor. We're asking for our leptin receptors, all of them, to be activated 
waking them up. If they were damaged, we're asking for that repair to happen now of all of our rep leptin receptors. And our leptin receptors are in proper position and all have perfect functioning. And now asking for that leptin that's coming in, coming into the brain. The leptin traveled a long and far journey from our fat cells. It's coming into our brain and our leptin receptors are willfully accepting that positioning of the leptin into the receptor. and allowing for that part of the brain to be functioning optimally. And a couple more deep breaths. You can continue here if you like. After we finish the program, you can come back and continue as long as you feel. Your body will give you a signal when you're finished for today on this process and taking a few deep breaths coming back staying fully grounded giving thanks and opening our eyes so thank you and welcome back everyone so please use that visualization to help you it's remarkable when you start to tune into the energies of the universe how we're all connected it's amazing how you can really fast track so you know some experts will say for leptin resistance it takes at least six to eight weeks to get this under control i'm telling you you're going to fast track and get your leptin in control part of your healing begins here i'm i'm so happy to be on this journey with you i can't wait to hear your results start taking some before and after pictures because you're going to thank yourself because things will just start to fall into place in future videos i'll share some more of the things that the epiphanies that I had and what's going on with my own body which were incredible so you know thank you for being a part of this journey with me as well and more shout outs hello to Ross and to BR and BR said oh you're welcome BR said thank you doctor I'm feeling relaxed you are so welcome thank you for being on this journey with me and I'm so glad that I can share this wonderful information with all of you so if you've been struggling with weight loss over the years and it's been such a struggle for you, I hope that this video really helped to share some new insights and gave you some great tips that you can start using right away. Do this tonight. Remember about four hours um, close to bedtime, four hours after your last meal, you're going to do this visualization. Do it every night and it will really help you. get. Make sure you see that sunrise tomorrow. It's going to be important for you as well. And let me know if you've got questions and comments, please share them with me. Um, anything that you would like me to cover in a future video, please, I would love to hear from you. And, you know, that would be fantastic so that we have always, you know, some new content that we can share with you based on what you want to hear. Be sure to share this video if you know that this info is going to help someone that you know. And also, if you learned something new, please give me a big thumbs up. I really, truly appreciate all the feedback and all the thumbs up <laughs> and the likes that you give me. And hit that subscribe subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed and you're new to my channel and always remember to take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thank you for joining me today.